This is Courage Unlimited. I'm your host, Chad Ikes, back for another episode. Please subscribe to the channel, like the channel, comment on the channel, hit the little alert button on the channel, share the channel. Today, I have a very loose idea of what I want to talk about. Um, that idea is, and I was thinking about this early this morning in the shower, our society has gotten extremely soft and it's almost as if we don't want life to be hard, but life is hard. Life has to be hard. Uh, the Wood Brothers, who's uh, one of my favorite bands, wrote a song about Happiness Jones. And basically it's, it's saying that I didn't, they didn't learn anything when they were happy. It was the tough times, the hard times. That's when we learn. That's when we grow as people. The, so I see this as, as you go through life, we all have hard times. We all have that struggle. And that's when we learn the most. And then we go through times that are good and happy and everything seems to be going right. Those are, those are just times to recharge the batteries, to clear our mind, because another challenge is going to come along. And if you read uh, Joseph Campbell's A Hero's Journey, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, life is about struggle. Life is about challenges. Going through life with nothing, with no challenges, with no nothing to, to stress us or strain us, then we're not learning. We're just buzzing through life. And that's not really life at all. Um, you know, I hear a lot, there's a lot of people, and I talk about racism a lot. There's, and, and see, that that's the funny thing to me is, is, what you hear, what I hear from from a lot of the people talking about racism, whether it's um, Middle Eastern, Black, uh, American Indian, and any race that's that's different. Well, there's even there's even a white there's even the white race. It's if 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 you really take some time and research it, you'll find that it's more or less a minority thing. Well, no, I shouldn't say a minority thing. It's a lower income. It's a lower income thing. If you go to, uh, I live here in Northern Nevada. If you go to the areas where the lower income people live, even the white people, they bitch and they blame it on the rich people. So they're, they're in the majority. So they're white. So they have nothing else to bitch. So then what do they do? They bitch about the people that have the money that they don't. And if you go to the poor communities of other races, they're going to bitch about the other race that's in the lead. And, and this is, this is, this is um, a woe is me kind of attitude. Instead of taking responsibility for their actions and what they do, they just want to blame other people. And as I said in one of my other videos, this is kind of a childish way to look at it. And I used to babysit a lot when I was younger to raise extra money. And I saw it all the time. Like kids would get in trouble and it's, they never wanted to take responsibility for their actions. They wanted to blame everyone else. Everybody hates me. Everybody's against me. No, you were wrong and you got caught. Now take your punishment and don't do it again if you don't like the punishment. Uh, it's a pretty simple rule. And it seems like in today's society, we're leaning against that. And on top of that, you have all these groups that are coming together now. And they're promoting that same mentality, that same woe is me mentality. And poor you and poor you. And we even have the social justice warriors running around now who apparently feel guilty for what they have. So they feel like they need to stand up for these other people because they can't take care of themselves and they can't stand up for themselves and I have to take care of them. But I'm not going to give them any of my stuff. I want the government to take people's stuff and give it to them. No, maybe they need to go work and earn their own stuff. You know, and then we have, now we have 
all the millennials and I think they call them Generation X that are coming out and they're living at home till they're 30. We're having, uh, there, there's all these adults that are in their 30s and 40s that sit around and play video games now when they have families to raise, or families they should be raising. You know, we have kids coming out of college that think they should make six figures in their first job. We have people that work at McDonald's thinking they should make 17 bucks an hour. You know what? Fast food joints were designed as entry-level jobs, and you're supposed to work your way up. It's not a career. So, and again, this goes back to courage. You need to have the courage to go, wait a minute, why is this happening to me? Is this my fault? Is this something I did? Well, I don't like this. How am I going to make this different? Oh, I might have to move somewhere for a better job. That's scary, man. But you know what? I'm going to have the courage. Okay, hey, I'm working at this job and I have no responsibility, but I make no money. Hmm. I wonder if I should try to get a better job or I wonder if I should try to apply for a management position or try to move up in this company. Hmm, that's pretty scary. I don't want to do that. No, nut the hell up. Get some courage and go for it. Apply for a better job. Man, I live at home and I, I play video games all day and I live off my parents. That's pretty cool. No, it's not. You're a lazy piece of shit. Like have some courage. Have some self-respect. Like go out and find work. You know, go right now. Skilled labor is increase is in a need. Uh, an increase in in jobs are happening there because there's not that many skilled labors anymore. Go to a job site. Be the grunt and work your way up and learn a skill, and then you'll be making a good living. You know, don't blame, stop blaming everyone else for your problems and take some responsibility for yourself. And if you're a criminal and you do something criminal and you resist the cops and you threaten the cops and you get shot, so what? You knew what you were doing. It has nothing to do with what race you are. You knew what you were doing. You knew it was wrong. You knew it was against the law. You were trying to get away without actually having the courage to go get a real job and live within the realm of society. I don't feel sorry for you, and I don't care what race you are. You know, I grew up, I was fortunate to grow up in some really tough times. Um, there's times where my parents were, were really broke and I remember eating a lot of bologna sandwiches if we had that. Um, most of the really hard times I was really small, so I don't fully remember, but there's plenty of stories and I do have flashes here and there. And I remember, I mean, even when I was growing up and you know, my dad, I, there was, I think there were stints probably 15 years where my dad never got a vacation. Um, there was a lot of times where, You know, luckily my dad could fix just about anything. But like I wrecked the car once after I got my license and that was, it was kind of a big deal. Like that put stress on the whole family uh, because we didn't have a lot of extra money. Um, There was Christmases where we didn't get a lot of stuff. Um, We always got a little something. Um, You know, and then as, as I grew up, my parents worked hard. Like there's times where we moved states so my dad could, could get a better job. Um, there were a few times where my mom didn't have to work, but most of the time, both of my parents worked. Uh, by the time I was in high school, my later years in high school, we were, we were, we were doing okay. I mean, we weren't filthy rich. I didn't get a car when I was 16. If I wanted a car, I had to go buy a car because my parents, they couldn't afford to buy me a car anyway. And I had to pay my own insurance. Like we didn't have a lot of money, but to me, we, we did okay. I never went totally hungry. Um, especially as, as I got older, I mean, I didn't get to be as big as I am by not eating. Um, so I kind of feel like I got to see a little bit of both spectrums and like in the hard times, my, my parents didn't bitch and complain, you know, they went out and did what they had to do. And I know my dad did a lot of jobs he didn't want to do because he had to feed his family. And 
I know my mom worked really hard. I mean, I used to hear them talk. They had jobs that sucked and they hated it at times. And I heard about it. They didn't quit. They didn't quit because they needed a job. And they kept that job and looked for better jobs. And, um, you know, they saved and worked and, and they've done okay because of that. But nothing, nothing was handed to them. They had no privilege. There was nobody in our family that had money. We worked for what we had. Luckily, my dad did know skills and my dad was able to build some houses, uh, some of the houses we lived in so they could get in, we could get into a house way cheaper. But that was a skill he went out and learned and studied. He didn't just become a carpenter. He started at the bottom and worked up like everyone else does. Um, you know, and then, and then with a lot of the moving that we did, I also got the benefit of being the new kid a bunch of times, um, which was super difficult for me being an antisocial kid. Uh, because even to find one or two friends was, was a struggle for me. And then there's times where I was the kind of one of the popular kids. There's times when I was the fat kid. There's times when I was the new kid. Um, I wasn't super good in school. I actually was in special classes, uh, in elementary school for a few years cause I was way behind. Um, yeah, so I've, I've been at the top and the bottom of the financial scale. I've been at the, well, not the top. I've never been at the top of the financial scale, but um, I've been at the bottom to upper middle class and everywhere in between. I've been to multiple different schools and been on the top of the school and the bottom of the school. And that helped me, I think that helped me see a lot of different perspectives and understand a lot of different perspectives. And, uh, ends me up to where I am today where I'm still looking at society going, man, what is, what is going on? Like, this isn't that complicated. If people would just treat people like people and understand that we're all different, we're all strange. Yes, there is a society. There is a society. There is a norm. And a norm is just a mathematical thing. Um, I'm on the outskirts of that. I always have been just because the things I do like are more on the, the misfit side of stuff. And that's okay. That's fine. Like, I don't get people that what's okay. Um, people that like to go out to parties and dance completely baffles me. Don't understand it at all. But hey, if that's what you want to do, cool, go do it. I like to go pound heavy weights in the gym. A lot of people don't like to do that. I like to go super, super fast out in the desert. A lot of people don't like to do that. We're all different. It doesn't mean we can't get along. We can't understand each other. You know, and that's having the courage. That's having the courage to understand someone else and go, man, even if I don't like it, even if I don't understand it, you're cool. It's all good. But back to the, back to the, the society, the thing that happened in society right now, we need to understand life is hard. We need to get back to, in some way, uh, how can I say this? Actually look for the hard, like actually find happiness in, in hard stuff. Like life's hard. That's good. That means I'm going to have to work hard. That means I'm going to struggle, but I'm going to come away with it a better person. And I know that. And I know that when I work through that struggle, I'm going to get through it. I'm going to eventually figure it out, no matter how hard it is. And then I'm going to be a better person for it. You see, I can turn a lot of things in life into the gym and gym into the life because they're both together. There's lessons to be learned. If you, if you learn all the lessons, you'll be successful in both of these. I'm not going to get stronger without hard work. It's not going to happen. Do I want to do all the hard things all the time? No. But I do them anyway because I have a goal. Because I know that if I work hard and do this, I'm going to get here. And a lot of that is the same in life. We have struggles. I look at back at all the struggles I had in schools when, when I got picked on and stuff. Well, that made me who I am. It made me tough. It made me learn how to deal with it. Back in my day, you could also beat the crap out of a bully. And if you've ever been bullied and you finally get that nerve and you go, that's it, I'm done, man. And you pound that kid, that's a great feeling. 
That's a life lesson right there. Probably one of the best life lessons you can get. That you know what? You can stand on your own two feet and you can stand up and you don't have to take it. Hell, even even in my day, I, I, I would fight a lot because I'd see kids get bullied. And it would irritate me, so I would go pound the bully. Because I knew that if I went home and I explained the situation, I wouldn't get in trouble. Uh, nowadays, kids can't do that, but that's a whole nother video. Um, it's hard, man. Life is hard. It's not easy. We work hard and we, and, we, and we go through our life. And if we're smart, we save and eventually we can retire. So we work hard and we save and we get to that point where we can retire. That's the benefit of all that hard work. You know, now we have people that don't think about the future. They don't care about the future. You know, kids growing up wanting their parents to, to support them till they're 35. Kids being on their parents' insurance till they're, what, 25, 26 now? Like, we need to stand up. And we need to be tough. And we need to have courage. Uh, it goes back to one of my earlier videos where I talk about my dad. My dad spanking me and saying, you want something? I'll give you something to cry about. And it's like, well, I'm already crying, man. Like, and he would say, this hurts me more than it hurts him. Well, I mean, when I have my niece and nephew, it was painful to punish them. But I'm the adult. And I need to do it. And it's hard, but the kids need that. They need that. They need to know that you're, there is repercussions for your actions. And I'm the adult, so no matter how much it sucks to punish them, I need to do that. And there were times where it was like, I hadn't seen them in a while, so this is my day with them. And they get in trouble, and i got to punish them. I'm like, Shh, man, there was half my day that I wanted to do stuff with them. But I'm the adult, so I had to suck it up and do what was right for them. And, and we need to, as people, suck it up and do what's right for our family, do what's right for our country, do what's right for our society. And we need to get tough. Okay, guys, I'm going to end it right there. Courageous, toughness. We need more of that in this country. We need more of that in this society. We need more of that in this world. And that's why I'm here. So again, like this channel, subscribe to this channel, share this channel. Let's make this whole world a better place, a more courageous place. I'm out.